Welcome. So I'm Elizabeth, and um, as um, we were saying earlier, I um, am a senior leader in Premier. But you know what? Really, in the end, that matters less than um, really what, what I have been doing over the past 15 years, and probably even more specifically over the last six years, which is going to be a lot of how I um, answer the, um, the concerns that you brought up. So for those watching, Online, I'm out here at Haven of Hope in Argyle, Texas. It's a facility that Premier Designs owns, and groups are able to come out and enjoy this property. And so we are always blessed when we're able to drive onto the property. Um, so what you need to know is we started our business um, in 2001 in the Tampa, Florida area. That's where we were, and for nine years we built our business there. Um, the, the short of that whole of the nine years was I usually, um, I always had 60 or more shows a year. I sponsored typically seven or more people a year. I had um, a lot of hostesses in that area, a great business. Um, Fred um, came home full time um, with our premier business at the end of 2005 when our boys were, um, that would be three and five. And we have both been work from home parents ever since. Now, I used to be a chemistry teacher. That is my background. I have a chemistry um, um, education degree. I taught chemistry for 10 years. Um, so I do think very left brain, okay? I think in outline form, I write in outline form, and I usually present in outline form, okay? Um, but um, that being said, I do love the opportunity to be able to teach and to train and to just share what God has been teaching me in the course of my journey. So in December of 2010, we moved from Florida to Texas, McKinney, which is about 50 minutes from here, and we completely started over. Not a, we still maintained our downline, um, but we had no friends and no family that lived in the area except for people who were already in Premier, okay? And they're not going to have shows for you, right? Like, you know, um, it's like, help a sister out. Not. Um, so... I, um, I, I'm going to be able to address some of these things that you're talking about because ultimately, whether you move out of an area into a new area, and that's where you find yourself having to restart, or you've lived in the same area your entire premier career, sometimes you find yourself in a place where you realize you're starting fresh. Um, and um, there are some key things that you're able to do in order to constantly have a fresh business all the time. What you need to know is your business is cyclical. You're going to have the ups and you're going to have the downs. The key is, are you right here? So I would teach my, um, my students, you know, if you were looking at a wave, there, there is a, a line that runs through that, and that's how we determine things like frequency. Well, see, you've got to be that line that runs through. This is called being steady, being consistent. And as your business rises and falls and rises and falls, if you are constantly working, okay, you can weather the ups and the downs of the business significantly better. And so that's an important um, aspect. So let me start here. All of these things that you talked about, the things that you said you liked about Premier, the flexibility, the freedom, the independence, the tax deduction, see, all of these things come around the fact that you get to be your own boss. Okay, and you know what? A lot of the challenges that you stated are because you get to be your own boss. Now, I want you to think about that. That is one of the best things about Premier or any direct selling business, and it's one of the hardest things about any direct selling business. Why? Because when we work for someone else, we are, we are plugged in to a very established structure. We're told when to arrive, we're told when to leave, we're told when we can have breaks and when we can eat. We're given um, basically what needs to be accomplished and then we're held accountable for that. And then of course, what a lot of people, what appeals to a lot of people about working for someone else is that they're guaranteed a paycheck in most businesses, obviously, every two weeks or every 15 days or once a month. But the bottom line is they know that if I do this, then it will result in this paycheck. <clears throat> and that's called bureaucratic living, okay? 
We grew up with it. You go to school and they, they like infuse this bureaucratic mindset into you. See, the challenge is the entrepreneurial mindset is very different. It's very different. You might work 40 hours in a week on your business and at the end of the week, you're not guaranteed a paycheck commiserating or a, I, that word just went out of my mind, but that's basically in tune with the 40 hours that you invested. Commensurate. Commensurate. Thank you. I was like, it's not commiserate. That's not what I'm looking for. See, anyone can do this. Okay. Um, so the entrepreneurial mindset is very different. You know, see, in the entrepreneurial mindset where you're the boss, what happens is that without realizing it, you will give yourself permission to give yourself a pass. No, I don't really want to get up this morning and put on clothes and makeup and jewelry and go out and meet people. I don't really feel like picking up the phone and making phone calls in order to grow my business. I, I, don't, I don't really want to have to do that in order to move my business forward. But here's the interesting thing. If you are working for someone else and you came into work and they told you, tell me your name again. Aaron, Aaron, today your quota is 50 phone calls for whatever said business requires. And at the end of the day, we're going to look at your log for how many phone calls you made. Guess how many phone calls Aaron would most likely make? 50 phone calls. But you see, in our business, we don't wake up and have someone sitting there going, well, today, Elizabeth, your quota is to make 50 phone calls for your business. We don't have that. And so then what happens is we have the, oh, oh, I just heard the dryer. I need to go take the clothes out. Oh, look at the dishes in the sink. I probably should take care of those before I can get on the phone because, you know, I've got to have mental clarity in order to be able to make that, you know, to make this successful. And then we go to like actually pick up the phone and then it's like, oh, I think I heard the baby. Oh, 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 my screen is broken. I don't know if I can actually make a call on this. I might cut my finger. Um, I mean, we can find any number of ways to give ourselves a pass, and we don't even realize that's what we're doing. So you got to remember, all the things that you said were great about your business really are tied to all the things that you said were challenging about your business. So the first thing I'm going to say to you is you must consider how you think about your business. That's, if you want to give it a Roman numeral one, that's Roman numeral one. Consider how do you think about your business? Do you have business building thoughts or do you have business busting thoughts? In other words, a business building thought would be, Wake up first thing in the morning, I got my list, I'm going to start working on my list. I'm going to eat the frog, baby. That's doing the hardest thing, the first, the first thing that, you know, when you start so that you get through, you know, the most important things initially. Do I have business building thoughts or do I have business busting thoughts? Business busting thoughts would include no one's going to answer their phone. No one responds to my text messages anyway, so why would I even bother texting? No one is looking to buy jewelry, so there's, there's no point in me pursuing that. Or my hostesses never um, get back to me, so why would I continue to try to contact them? Okay, so you've got to assess your thinking. Are the, is it business building or business busting? Would it be positive thoughts or negative thoughts? Because here's the thing. Um, on the Glitzy Gems YouTube channel, you're going to find a training called Transformed Thinking. And actually, you could even look at, there's multiple versions on there. I always want you to go to the most recent if there, if there are duplicates, um, because each group is different and I might say it a different way. But the most recent one that I did is Become a Craftsman of Right Thinking. Become a Craftsman of Right Thinking. And it really will walk you through five different things that you can do in order to get your thinking where it needs to be in order to have the success that you need in your business. Now, why is that important? Because you see, here's the way it works. <coughs> How you think will determine the beliefs that you have about your business. And the beliefs that you have will set the stage for the expectations that you carry 
um, about your business. And your expectations will yield to attitudes that you display, and those attitudes will determine the actions that you take or do not take, and that action or lack thereof will determine the habits that you see in your business. Okay, so let's get real. Right now, I want you to take 30 seconds and I want you to write down one positive habit that you have in your business and one negative habit that you have in your business. Go. One positive habit that you have in your business and one negative habit that you have in your business. Try to keep it concise, but I want you to write it down. And if you're watching this, you write it down as well. So a positive habit and a negative habit. Okay, 10 seconds. And if you don't get it fully done, you can always go back. Okay, time's up. All right, who would be willing to share with me a positive habit that they have established in their business? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so customer care calls after you've had the opportunity to interact with those customers. Let's say it's at a show, like in the home or wherever it is that you're connecting with them. So customer care calls. Okay, so here's how it works. If your thinking is that I need multiple touches with my customers beyond just selling them some jewelry, then your belief is it is worth my time in order to make that a priority. Your expectation is by making customer care calls, it will yield positive results in my business. And that, yield, that leads to an attitude of, man, I'm excited to be able to connect with my people beyond the initial purchase of their jewelry. And so what are my actions? I actually pick up the phone and I make connection calls or customer care calls and that leads to habits of things like your customers would likely be some that would say, man, she is so good about her follow-up. I, I so appreciate the fact that she you know, takes care of me beyond that show. You see, that's an example of how the thought process yields the habit that you see, okay? Someone different, give me a negative habit that you wrote down about your business. Yes, ma'am? Keeping, Keeping shows open for too long. Okay, so let's see what that would look like. If, if my habit is keeping shows open too long, then what we do is we back that up to the action. The action is I wait and wait and wait, right? So that's the action that ultimately I take. I don't do it in a, in, um, you know, in a, in a timely manner. Okay, so we back up from action to attitude. Okay, so the attitude might be, oh, if I close it too soon, I might miss out on some orders. All right, or my attitude might be, um, you know, that my, uh, my hostess, you know, I'm waiting for her, I'm waiting for her, you know, so I need to make sure that I have all of that, all of those details. So then the attitude, prior to the attitude, right, is the expectation. The expectation might be that, you know, if I, remember what I'd said, if I don't hold it open, I'm going to miss out. Like I've got this fear of loss expectation. You bring that back up to belief. The belief is, if I don't keep it open, then it won't be as good as what it should be. And the thinking, the thinking is, you know, all that's going to stem from, for could be, for example, that, you know, people just need more time. Like, this is just the way that it is. People are slow to make a decision. You see all these, like, little thought, thought things that I'm giving you? Which, notice... It's that initial thought that brought you down to a habit that can be very challenging in your, in your business. Now, I will tell you, there are some circumstances where you can actually keep a show open and it be a, something that is very positive. And I'm going to teach you, I'm going to just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this to you so that you hold me to it. I'm going to teach you something that you can do in your business that can actually be of benefit and give you an option um, for how you do business. So just make sure if I don't say it that I come back to that. So what you think matters in everything. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of passages of scripture that are also in that um, become a craftsman of right thinking and then I'm going to move on. Romans 12. 
1 and 2. It says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice because it is your reasonable act of service. And then verse 2 says, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm going to challenge you that in this business and in your life, you need a constant mind renewal. I choose to get that from the Word of God. I could give you a whole hour on why I I get it from the Word of God or why I choose to go to the Word of God um, because it is hands down the one literary source that above any other literary source has been rewritten We're talking between Old Testament and New Testament 25,000 times and still holds true to the original work. The closest would be like um, Aristotle, Plato. The most theirs were rewritten were like 650. I'm telling you, the Bible has held true thousands of years. So that's why I choose to go to the Bible for a mind renewal. The other I wanna give you is 2 Corinthians. Chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Now, the one portion of that that I want to I, I highlight is the most important for this idea of thinking, but it says our weapons are not carnal. In other words, not like what we expect to be when we think of weapons here on earth. They're not carnal. They are mighty. To demolish every stronghold that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And here's the important part. And to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. You see, what you allow to hang out in your mind, be it positive or negative, is creating neural pathways, literally and chemically, in your brain that will either business build or business bust. And so if you are not taking every thought captive and making it obedient, you could be allowing thoughts to hang out in your mind that are taking your business down versus elevating your business the way that it needs to be. For example, when we moved here from Florida, you know, I was used to doing six to eight shows a month. I was used to averaging $2,500 to $4,000 of retail every month, okay? That jewelry show income paid for gas and groceries and you know all the day-to-day expenses. We get here, we don't know anyone. Every booking is a lifestyle booking, okay? So they don't know you. I mean, we had everything from the, oh, what do you do? Because it's kind of how it went down. They'd be like, oh, so you moved here because your husband's job? No. So they transferred him? No, ma'am. You know, so, so why did you come here? Oh, we came here to build our premier design story business. Well, okay, well, what's that? Because a lot of people haven't heard it, even though it's based here in Irving. And I'm like, oh, you know, we offer high fashion jewelry, could be in home, in office. And, and then it was literally like, I, I, ha- I had more than one person in those early days. And it's like a recoil. Oh, you do one of those. Um, and so what I wanted to go is, yes, yes, I do, you know, but, you know, I didn't. I didn't want to freak them out, you know, I, because that would have just been, you know, the flesh crying out, like, why are you doing that to me? Um, but we, uh, you know, in that, because in those early days, everything is lifestyle, right? I went from six to eight shows to barely scraping one to three, okay? And, and because all of those are lifestyle, those one to three shows, because, hey, listen, I've got a downline from whom I want to earn a commission. I need to have $600 in sales. I mean, we were averaging, you know, around $250 to $300 per show. Like, that's total retail, people, okay? So you go from making, you know, anywhere from $1,000 to $2,500 a month to barely making 300 from your jewelry shows a month, that's a huge hit. And see, here's the thing, what happens, right? So in Florida, we were having this, right? In Texas, we started having this. Okay, so the question is, what are you gonna do when you get down here? Because I'll tell you, it's easy to work premiere when you're up here, right? Here's the line, you're, you're cresting up, Things are good, momentum is on your side, but then you break that line and you start to come down here with things like low retail, no shows, low shows, you know, um, 
crazy shows. I mean, I mean, there's any number of shows that we could talk about, right? But it's what you do down here. See, this is where if you're up here, if you're not addressing your thinking, when you get down here, it becomes even harder to press through wrong thinking. It's when you're down here that you start going, I just want relief. Why does it have to be so hard? Why am I not making money? Why aren't people actually scheduling shows? Why aren't people buying jobs? I mean, you start having all of this poor thinking down here, and it's very difficult to bring yourself back up, to be able to work your way back up. And see, this is why down here is where most people quit Premiere, because they're just looking for relief. And in our minds, we believe if I just quit, it'll be easier. I'll go and find something else that will be easier and I might as well hang my hat here. And this is what I'm here to tell you, that you will carry all of that wrong thinking into whatever else you do. So here's the foundation that I stand on. God brought you into Premier for a purpose. So why not use your time in Premier to allow God to transform your thoughts, which ultimately will transform you and how you behave, because that, my friends, will carry you much further into the future than just hopping from one direct selling business to another. And here's the thing, on social media, we see all this, oh, I'm making all this money. Oh, I just got a new car. Oh, I mean, this is so great. You should be doing this too. Or they'll come to you, especially if they know you're successful, and they'll be like, oh, girl, you totally need to add this on top of Premiere because I can just see that you would be so great at it. And I'm here to tell you, Andy Horner has been saying to us from the very beginning, you cannot chase two rabbits and catch either one. And I'm talking, don't even flirt. That's what I call it, with other businesses. You know, it's the whole, well, I'm just going to sign up as a user of the product because that can't be that bad. And then what happens is people start asking you and the next thing you know, you're repping more than one line. And I'm telling you, you cannot focus when you are trying to represent more than one company. Okay? So I just want to share with you Roman numeral, Roman numeral one, what you think matters. Do not let negative thoughts hang out in your mind without addressing them. So here's what I'm going to say as your last encouragement and challenge. What comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your mouth, has, is based on a very well-formed thought that you have allowed to hang out. Okay, so if you hear yourself saying, no one's booking shows, it's so hard to get shows. My retail is always so low. That's because you've been allowing those negative thoughts to hang out. So much so, you believe them and you're willing to share them. So last thing I would say about this one, this one point. You're here at Haven of Hope. You're making great connections with other people. Find one or two like-minded people among you that you're going to see on a regular basis back at home, and you guys get together, and I don't, what, you want to pinky swear, you want to, you know, agree, but you need to have people who are going to hold you accountable. And this is what it would sound like. When you say something that's negative or that's business busting, your friend is going to go, hey, go, hey girl, did you just hear what you said? And she's going to go, what? You're going to go, you just said that, and you repeat what they said. And remember how we were talking about the fact that we've got to have business building thoughts. Okay, because if it's coming out of your mouth, it's been hanging out in your mind a lot longer than what you even realize. Okay, so find some accountability um, on that. Okay, Roman numeral two. How can you constantly, so hold on, before you write anything, because I got to verbalize it, and then I'll, I'll give you like what I might say is my title for Roman numeral two, right? <laughs> so, sorry, I saw you all writing, I'm like, wait, it'll end up being like 10 words long if you start writing now. Okay, so how can you consistently have freshness in your business? Okay, what are some things that you could do? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you, we'll call this creative, <clears throat> 
rebuilding. Creative rebuilding. Now, if you are new in the business, you might not be rebuilding. You might be just looking for some creative ways to build. Write it however it works based on your circumstances. Are you with me? Okay. Creative rebuilding or creative building. So here are some things that I learned moving from Florida to Texas um, because I had to find ways to be creative to keep a fresh and steady stream in my business. Because you gotta remember, in Florida, I mean, I was getting shows from shows. I like hardly ever had to pick up the phone to get calls, much less go out and network, which I'm gonna talk to you about. Um, but because I was constantly getting shows from shows. Well, I come to Texas, Okay, like, like you get this, right? So like if you don't have shows on your calendar, it's kind of hard to get shows from shows, right? Have you noticed that, right? And what happens? I will say that in leadership, I think in many ways over the years, we have not done a good enough job as leaders of training people beyond a booking activity. Listen, a booking activity will get you nowhere if you do not have a show on your calendar. You can have the best verbiage, you can have the best, you know, activity, but if you don't already have shows on your calendar, that isn't going to help you. Can I get a witness? Okay, so we have got to make sure that we're looking at how can we add shows outside of already having shows on your calendar. So I want you to know, I'm not going to say a single thing about a booking activity inside your show. I'm going to talk to you about how do you get it outside of there. Okay, first thing is you got to get up and you got to show up. See, our problem is we want bookings to drop in our lap. Okay, Angie, Elizabeth, Teresa, I mean, could we count on one hand the number of bookings that have just like kind of come to us? And even then, even then, they don't just come to you, they come through usually some activity or person that you've had a connection with. Okay, bookings don't just drop in your lap. I mean, you can cross your legs and you can put your arms out all you want. Bring me bookings, bring me bookings. And it's not, okay, like that doesn't work, all right? You have got to get up and you have got to show up. Okay, let me give you some ways to, get up. obviously, you know, like get up, that, that's common sense, right? Like get up out of bed. You need to dress like the jewelry lady. You need to put jewelry on. And you need to look like a, and I'm gonna say even beyond that, you need to look like a business woman. See, and if you look like a business woman, people will perceive that and they will treat you that way. Here's the thing, this is what I've learned. You can get shows from shows being casual and fun, but if you're gonna go out into the business community and you're gonna work on steady streams of people, they're looking for business people. Because here's the thing, I have been, um, I've been networking in um, small business owner groups since 2011. These people, so my banker friend, she tells me the smallest business loan is $25,000, the average is 150,000 to 250,000 for people to start their own business. They don't expect to make a profit for three to five years. And so direct sellers come in and they don't, most direct sellers come in and all they're looking to do is add a few shows to their calendar and then they're out, right? Because then we start going into, I get shows from my shows. And these small business owners, Fred calls, um, people who just come in to get a, a little bit of business on their calendar and then out he calls them vampire networkers because they're just coming in to get what they want and then they're leaving. And small business owners initially will view direct sellers with a stiff arm because that's what they're used to. That people, all they do is they just come in, try to get a little bit of business, and there is no desire on the direct seller's part to actually help their business be successful. And see, that's what I've learned in the business community. This is about, we are mutually desiring for both of our businesses to be successful. And so you gotta get up, but yes, you've gotta show up, but when you show up, you need to look like a business person. Now I'm not saying you gotta have hose on and heels on all the time, but you need to have a pull together look. And I'm, I'm gonna be the first to say that while 
certain things are in style right now, I would never think about wearing ripped jeans to a business community meeting, period. I just wouldn't do it. Why? Because you're trying to elevate their, the view of these people. And remember, they have good reason for thinking this, right? They've invested, some of them, hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're in big. They need this to work so that they don't have to file bankruptcy. Listen, our $930 approximately, which includes the boutique and our um, A&A, this is peanuts like pennies compared to what these other business owners are doing. And see, the thing is, we treat our business like we've invested pennies. See, they treat theirs differently, like they get up and they're making the phone calls. Why? Because they have $100,000 on the line or whatever it is. And see, so you've got to make sure that you have that look. Now, here are some things you can do. You need to, and I believe this is one of the things that needs to happen in Premier country, throughout the entire country, we need more jewelers who are going out and networking. What does networking look like? Here are some basic things you can do. First, I think everyone should first look at their chamber of commerce for their city or town. <coughs> the chamber of commerce. You can look it up on the web. You can see who's close to you. Here's the thing. It's not just about being a member of a chamber of commerce. You need to see that they actually have an ongoing networking opportunity within that chamber of commerce. That could be a women's group that meets, that's, you know, a, a, like within the chamber. I have been going to a Wednesday morning networking um, for six years now. Let's see, I guess I just started my seventh year. Um, and, and of course, that's been super, super beneficial for me. So a chamber of commerce is a, a great place. But it, it, remember, it's not just that you say, I'm a member of the chamber. The chamber, you, if you're going to join a chamber, it needs to be one that provides you with networking opportunities that are going to be beneficial in your business. Okay, so that's a, a chamber. And here's how a networking, um, networking works. You are going to, you get to go, most of them, to their networking meetings at least twice before they're going to ask you to join. Okay. When you go, you typically get a 30-second commercial that you're able to share telling who you are, what you do, a good referral source for you, um, and that's, uh, that's your opportunity to really be able to um, get, get, your, get yourself out there. So the one that I used initially when we moved here is, um, I, and actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you um, probably one of my more refined ones because I've learned a lot over, um, over the years. Um, but I would say something like, like that. Do you walk into your closet and you say to yourself, I have nothing to wear? Well, I would enjoy becoming your fashion paramedic. I can breathe new life into your wardrobe, and I can do it by offering you free and half-price jewelry, or I can help you meet real needs through having an additional source of income through our amazing business opportunity. I'm Elizabeth, your Premier Designs Jewelry Lady, and I would love to share more with you after the meeting. That might be one that I would do, okay? I initially, um, um, in the early days, I was offering $50 in free jewelry for anyone who actually scheduled um, a jewelry showing. Um, and that's how I got my first um, booking in Texas, was by offering that at a Chamber of Commerce meeting. Um, and it was someone who used to be a premier jeweler who happened to be there. I mean, God put her there, I believe, totally for me, um, because she took me up on that um, offer. So you're 30 seconds. And I can send to, I can, I can send you guys, I have a, a um, a one-pager that just has some fun 30-second uh, commercial ideas for you. Um, that way you're not reinventing the wheel. You could just memorize one of those. Um, also, on the Glitzy Gems YouTube channel, if you just type in 30-second commercial on the search, you know, in the little search thing, you'll see a little how-to video that I created, and you'll also see an example that kind of uses that fashion paramedic um, I will tell you, in the networking world, a lot of business people are kind of dry, and I mean, that's, that's just the reality. So when you do things like rhyme, like I would say to them, you know, I, uh, like one of my others, that they, they always love it. It's so funny. They clap after I say it. It just makes me laugh. Um, but I'll use the phrase, you know, so I take attention um, away from the hips and bring it to the lips, away from the thighs and bring it to the eyes by teaching women how to accessorize. Um, and they love it. It's so funny. I'm like, listen, Fred, 
because you know he's a photographer. This is he he is a photographer full time. I I really work for Fred full time, and then I'm also trying to do Premiere full time, right? But Fred has made a name for himself as the Asian sensation. Okay, <laughs> he he raps. Um, did you hear that? He raps all of his commercials to music with timed photos to what he's saying. And they are all very intricate rhymes, okay? Like, we're talking crazy. Um, and they love it. He is like known in the area as the Asian sensation who has the imagination to come to your location. So why should you go through perspiration? Because I've already made the preparation. Oh, yeah, he's like, a, it's, it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> so when you're creative, people really, really love that, okay? So that's one form of networking. Another place that you could go is meetup.com, M E E T up.com and put in some search features. You could say small business networking. You could say, um, you could put in the keyword entrepreneurial. Um, you, could, you could put in search words like women's networking. <clears throat> Look in like a 30 mile radius of where you are and here are some things you're going to want to look up, look at before you just show up at a group. How many people are RSVPing? Okay. If you're not getting anywhere from eight to 10 or more RSVPs, then likely the group is small and maybe it's not very well organized or formed. Um, you want to make sure that you, it's a good location. What I, what I mean is that, you know, obviously make sure that it's safe and it, it's a place where you could go and, and know that you're, excuse me, um, that it's going to be um, uh, beneficial for you. You can definitely join groups that are other direct, where there's a lot of other direct sellers because um, one of the great ways creatively to get shows outside of your, sh um, outside of home shows is show swaps. It's not... It's not my preference, but sometimes it's where you are and it's what you need to do in order to get events on your calendar, okay? Um, so that's, that would be a reason to go and um, check out one of those, um, one of those meetings. Um, I don't know, depending on what area you live in, um, but I want you to search for something called Net Weavers, N-E-T-W-E-A-V-E-R-S. Net, like N as in Nancy. Um, Netweavers, it's a great organization. It's also very affordable. Uh, so that is, um, that's also an option there. I get asked a lot about BNIs. Um, this is going to be my, it's just an opinion that I have. Um, the biggest challenge with BNI is that is the expense. Okay, it's, it is very pricey. Most people are going to be investing around $1,000 a year to be a part of a BNI. Okay, um, but the other, the other aspect about that that is, is a little bit more challenging for us is when you do your 30 second commercial, according to the hard and fast rules of BNI, you are not able to talk about sponsoring at all. You can talk about net, you can talk about retailing jewelry, you can talk about jewelry shows. Um, but, but most, if they're following the rules to the T, will tell you that you cannot talk about sponsoring. Now listen, some groups will not follow the rules to a T, you understand, right? Um, but for network marketing, they do not allow you to, what, what they say is recruiting um, in the commercial. And so what I told one of the vice presidents of a local group here, I was like, listen, you're asking me to not share 50% of my business. You know, and so I'm not willing to, to invest that amount of money and only be able to share 50% of my business every week at this meeting. Of course, you can share it in one-to-ones all you want, okay? Um, but and where the large group is concerned, um, you can only do the, the retailing side. Um, so BNI is definitely has worked for a lot of people, but you just have to keep in mind, it is a larger investment in terms of marketing your business, okay? Um, so those are some ways that you can um, get outside. So you've been hearing me talk a little bit about dollars. Most um, chamber of commerces could run you everything from $100 for a year. I pay $444 for the year. Okay, but wait, because I see some of you going, oh, 
Remember these business people who have invested $200,000, right, to get their business started? By the way, that doesn't include their month-to-month -month operations. It doesn't include what they invest to market their business, whether it's direct mail, advertising on the radio, through however they choose to do it. You've got to think about this networking as you, as a business owner, are marketing yourself and your business. That $444, this past February, I have an annual hostess that I met through the Chamber of Commerce. Her name is Cheryl, and she is awesome. Um, she has been a faithful hostess of mine every February since 2012. And every February, when she has her show, I earn my entire year's investment in the Chamber, every year. As a matter of fact, this past February, um, her show was $1,450. And you know what? That was without a purchase promotion. And there were a lot of people who were upset that there was no purchase promotion. And you know what? I was going, thank you, Lord, that we don't have a purchase promotion. Do you know why? Because I've always felt like that her people would, would choose to purchase without a purchase promotion, and the purchase promotion was actually decreasing the total of the show. And you know what? It was true. Without a purchase promotion, the average ticket was between $100 and $200 at her show. And so, some, so remember thinking, if you have gotten in to the thinking that we should always have a promotion. I'm gonna challenge you, you need to change that thinking. I believe it's one of the challenges that we're faced with because jewelers every month are looking for the next thing. What's the next thing that would cause me to want to call people or to promote my business rather than just calling people and promoting their business? Sorry, I get a little passionate about that, okay? <laughs> but seriously, if you're constantly, if you're constantly looking for an external motivator to work your business, when there is no external motivator, you'll just give yourself a pass. Oh well, Premier didn't give me a promotion this month, so I guess I just need not to work my business. But see, this promotions do like this, right? So if you're not steady, in this, where you're working your business regardless of promotions, and then also how do you think about it, right? If your thought process is with or without a promotion, we have the best thing out there. We have the best thing out there. If that's your thought process, then with or without a promotion, you're working your business, okay? So that is an example of how this all ties together. Do not think that because Premier is not offering a promotion that you cannot have a buy. Here's the thing, no hostess promotion, no purchase promotion. February was my best month since we moved to Texas. Six years, my best month since we moved to Texas with no promotion either for the hostess or for purchases. So you've got to change your thinking about that and you've got to get outside. So we talked about networking, chamber and um, meetups. Let's also creative rebuilding. Creative rebuilding <coughs> has to do with how you market yourself even when you're going to these meetings. So you saw on the counter back where Fred and I were set up, business cards. To give you an idea of how you can use the headshot that Fred's going to be providing you in a way that gives you maximum impact on your business card. I am a big proponent of business cards because I've been using them. It's a way for people to see your image. And by the way, um, if you, um, once you have, like, if you choose to do a, a business card design that Fred does, part, if you ever get an email from me, you'll see I have a digital business card. It is the front of my business card. It is my, um, my signature on every single email. So that every email that I send out, people see my picture, they have my website information, they have my email, they have my phone number. It's all right there in a digital form in the bottom. Then what I do is I bring that digital business card into um, Red Stamp, and I now have in my, um, in my phone, I have a thank you for the compliment on my jewelry. And at the top, it actually has my business card and my little thank you and a little $10 gift from me to them for noticing my jewelry, okay? Um, I also have a thank you for your purchase. You are helping to support my family. 
Um, so I have that in digital form that includes my business card. So having, having a professional image is very important. Um, and that's one of the reasons, um, you know, I'm thankful that I think it was in 2012, the first time that um, John called Fred about coming out here and doing some headshots for their, the group that they had. And that actually was the beginning of Fred coming out here um, and um, offering that service. It really started more in 2013 when we got the online catalog and people were looking to have their image there um, and not a cutout, okay? Uh, you know, because it Matt, people notice that. They will tell you that when people are looking for people to hire on LinkedIn, the headshot that they see on their LinkedIn profile, huge in terms of whether or not they'll give them a second look. And so your professional image does matter. And I'm just a big pro pro proponent in Premier is that if we're thinking that I'm a business owner, if we're thinking the way that a business who has invested $200,000 is thinking, we are thinking that how I look matters and that my professional image and what I'm conveying matters, okay? Um, so I say in one of my commercials that what Premier Designs Jewelry does is it gives you a pull together look that gives you a great first impression, which makes second and third impressions possible. Because that's really what it does. Our jewelry helps women to have a pull together look so that they can make a great first impression and that's what makes second and third impressions possible, okay? Um, so we've talked about Chamber, we've talked about meetup.com, um, some other ways um, to consistently get outside of your circle is what social groups are you where um, uh, what social groups can you connect into that will help you in making new connections with people. So social groups could be, you know, what something that you do through church. Although I'm not suggesting that you go to the go to church with the purpose of building your business. Okay. Um, but I will tell you, we spent three and a half years in a church where I think I ended up getting two jewelry shows over the three and a half um, years from someone actually inside, from two different ladies inside the church. And then the Lord moved us to um, uh, the church where we are now and where we serve. And literally within the year, we had already had so many more hostesses come out of that. Not because we were there actively promoting our business, but because we were making connections, they were, um, they were hearing about what we do, and then I was also being very proactive. Oh, you're going to the Rio Grande mission trip. I would, I'm just, just want you to know that I offer fundraisers, and I, I really enjoy being able to give back to missions. I would love for you to consider allowing me to help you earn the money for that mission trip. And I've done that multiple times um, through for people going on um, people going on mission. So you have got to connect in. You can't sit at home and expect to be making new connections. So whether you go bowling, what some people use tennis, um, whether you find a book club, some people go to bunko, but you've got to be connecting socially with people, different people than who you always see. Because if you're just hanging out with the same people, it's going to be really tough to expand your circle, okay? Here's the next thing you can do to expand your circle. I want you to think right now, think right now, in your community, I don't care how small it is, I want you to write the name of a person that you know is super connected in your community. They know a lot of people. Who do you know in your community, no matter how small or how big, that you know, like the, the person that you know who knows the most people, all right? For someone else, they might go, well, that's not a lot of people, but for you, they know a lot of people. I want you to write their name down. And here's what I'm gonna challenge you to do. When you get home, you pick up the phone and you call them. Hi, this is Elizabeth, because most likely, remember, you know them, so they know you also. You're not just cold calling someone. Listen, I was just recently learning about a way to really um, do a better job of marketing my business. And I immediately thought of you because I know that you are so well connected in the community. And I would love to just be able to sit down with you to learn more from you about how I can better connect in the community. Okay, so it's very clear. This is not a sales call. 
I'm not trying to sell you jewelry. I'm not trying to get you to sign up in the business. I'm looking to sit down one-to-one -one with you so that I can learn from you about how I can do a better job of connecting into the community. And so then when you have this over lunch or coffee, and you're, um, you're able to share, you, you need to go prepare to ask some questions, you know, and to share some basic information. So that could be like, okay, I'm looking for networking groups. Who do you know in the area that is connecting through a networking um, atmosphere or has, has a, an established network group? So you're asking some very specific questions for that. I'm looking to make some connections. You could even say socially. You know, what are some of the groups that you know of, you know, that are active and really, so you, you need to go with some very specific questions and find out so that you can see how they process the community, the connections, um, and also, so that's one way, so someone who is super connected. The other way is to start scheduling one-to-ones, okay? Who else do you know that's either in business, in direct sales, different from Premier, where you could schedule a one-to-one? -one. I would love to sit down and meet with you so that I can learn more about your business. I want to be able to share with you more about my business so that together we can look at how we could strategically partner to help each other grow. Strategically partner. Okay, I'm married to a photographer. What say you look at the photographers in your area and you call them and ask to sit down for a one-to-one -to, -one to find out how you can strategically help each other to grow? And for example, couldn't you offer that you would be, if they were gonna have a headshot event, they're gonna offer it to the community that you could bring and set up an accessory table you will offer accessories to anyone getting in front of the camera and that if they then choose to buy that, you could sell it to them. And you could also have information out there about the business, about scheduling to get free jewelry. <coughs> That's a strategic partnership, okay? And then, of course, that photographer, if they find added value in that, might also keep some of your catalogs if they have an, a studio or something along those lines. See, that's strategic partnering with people. How could we do that? So Fred and I have strategic partnerships with Mary Kay ladies, okay? Because we have one um, from whom I make my own purchases from, but then we have another who's a makeup artist. And so anytime we have a client who wants to have her makeup done, guess who we call? And then she has the option of making that connection with that client for future business. So strategic partnership is very important. It's a great way for you to extend your business beyond. And here's the thing, you can't network and then stop. You, you have to see it as an ongoing thing that you do so that when the ups, networking is icing on the cake, but when you get down here, networking will bring you consistent outside sales, individual orders that you can then do the last thing that I'm gonna do in this bullet point, which is leverage your personal shows. If I asked each of you right now to pull out your calendar and to tell me how many shows you have scheduled in the next 12 months, every single one of us should have minimally 12 shows on the calendar. Now, before, we could only do one personal show a month. So, did you hear my word? Minimally, say it with me, minimally. Minimally, you should be doing one personal show a month. Minimally, minimally. Are you getting it? Minimally one a month. And here's the thing, if you schedule them out so that you know, so like I'm doing a birthday bash personal show in April, because my birthday's in April. And I'm gonna do it, I think it's, I'm doing it the day after my birthday. Um, but I have it scheduled. So I, um, so what you do is when you know they're scheduled, and by the way, you can make them theme. You could do one on your birthday month. I had one jeweler, she did a, um, a mac and cheese jewelry night where people brought their favorite mac and cheese recipe 
and they all tried everybody's mac and cheese recipe and she sold jewelry, okay? I've had one had a pizza night where they all got together, she bought a couple of pizzas, they had pizza, she showed jewelry, and she had a personal show, okay? You can do all kinds of, you can, Java and jewels, jeans and bling, I mean, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things that you could do, but here's the thing, once you have it scheduled, you create the invitation. Make it digital, because I think digital is awesome. Do a red stamp, okay? You're out and about. Someone at the grocery store comments on your jewelry, and you go, oh, thank you so much. This is part of the line that I rep. You know what? I have an event coming up in a couple of weeks. If you will just give me your cell phone number, I'll send you an electronic invite. I would love for you to come, okay? Most people will go, sure. My number is, and they give you your number, you're typing it in, and then you attach that red stamp that you've saved, and it goes to her, and now what you want to do is you create, by the way, it'd be good if you could get her name, okay, right? <laughs> create a contact, and then I make note, met in Kroger, because that's, that's one of the local grocery stores that I go to, okay? Guess what? Not only have you gotten an invite out, but you can actually follow up with her. Like the week prior to your personal show, you can send quick little texts. It was great meeting you. Just want to remind you that my personal show is on this day. And then the day before, hey, well, sh well, I expect to see you there. Now, if you're doing that over and over and over again while you're out and about, you're constantly meeting and making new connections. Now, just remember, it might take me four months of inviting her before she ever comes. Okay, but see, most people, what happens? What happens? First, it's like this. I met someone. I got her information. And I sent her an electronic invite. Okay? And then the, the event comes, and we're kind of right here. She doesn't show up. We start the downward slide. Okay? And we send the next month, and the next month, and the next month. And we go, she's never coming. Right? So what do we do? We drop them. But you've got to remember, it takes usually, I mean, most people will tell you it could take upwards of <laughs> seven to eight touches before someone actually comes. So here's the thing. Are you willing to stay the course even when they are telling you no? When we first moved here, I was doing, uh, well, then we couldn't do personal shows. So I was doing mystery hostess shows. February, no one showed up. It didn't help that we had an ice storm and I had to reschedule and, you know, but that was February. March, I had a mystery hostess show. I invited people just like I'm telling you, no one showed up. April, I had a mystery hostess show. No one showed up. May, I had a mystery hostess show. Six people showed up. See, here's the thing. You have, remember this? You have to keep doing this. If you do not keep moving forward, you cannot expect your business to move forward. Okay, so your investment today makes a difference later. Okay, we can't even say immediately tomorrow. Typically, they'll say what you do today affects your business 90 days out. Okay, so you've got to constantly be realizing that's why you must always continue to um, move forward um, with that. Okay, I'm going to make that, I need to, I've given you some initiating, some asking there. Okay, now let me give you, oh, this is another creative rebuild. i got to say this in this, this bullet point. Okay, and then I'm, I'm going to have to wrap it up. Um, when did I start? I think I might be over my time. Um, okay, so here is a creative thing. I, I want to tell you about jewelry. Okay. I can listen to you all day. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so let me tell you about jewelry. Something that I needed to change. I don't want to say that I needed to change it. I was looking for creative ways to get business. Okay. So this goes back to holding your jewelry shows open. All right. So I'm going to, so let me, before I press forward, let me say this. What I'm about to share with you isn't for everyone. It's going to be dependent upon your circumstances. Do you work full time? Do you work part time? I'm talking about for somebody else. Okay. What flexibility do you have in your premier business? But if you have flexibility, I believe this can be um, a real game changer for you in being able to be creative. All right, here's how it works. Because we couldn't do personal shows when um, I, we first moved to Texas, and I was doing mystery hostess shows, but I needed $100 in sales to make it a show, right? And I needed $100 in sales, and I needed people. So here's how I did it. I, at my networking events, would always bring my jewelry, okay? Um, they would allow us to set back, um, set something up in the back of the, the room, and I would, I would just pull up in a showcase of jewelry. And I would sell right out of my kit, okay? Oh, you like this necklace? Great. 
that will be this much money. I write up the order form. I always have boxes with me. I bag it. I put it in the box and they go. Okay. Now they have their product, right? So I choose to wait to reorder the product because I can. It's my sample. So I put that order in a folder that says we're in March. So I'll say March. And then I would keep doing that. I would keep selling jewelry right out of my kit. Boom. I got $100 in sales. Now I'm like, I need some people because that's how we had to do it back then, right? I need some people. So that's when I might say at my, in my 30 second commercial, I have $30 in free jewelry to give away. I need some ladies to give me 15 minutes of their time at the end of the meeting back at my jewelry and you'll be in the drawing for $30 in free jewelry. And I would have a mystery hostess show right there. Now, those women who had put, remember I was selling off the, out, of my, out of my samples, it was going into the folder, and then I have the mystery host to show. Now I submit it as a show. See, that show was open the entire month, but no one was waiting for their jewelry. Okay? So it was a way for me to constantly be developing $100 in sales to make sure that I could actually have shows. Because listen, if you're going to build this business, you need to constantly be submitting shows. Okay? I had to get over not wanting them to be $100 shows because in the rebuilding stages, a lot of times you're going to have some smaller shows and that's okay, okay? Um, so that's one way that you can do that. Now, so what happened is I started actually going to my shows and I probably sell 90% of all of my jewelry at any of my shows right out of my samples. Most everyone walks out immediately from my shows with their jewelry. They become a walking advertisement immediately when they go back to work, when they go back home, however they're wearing it. And then, um, now by the way, I still close my shows within three days. Um, so if I have a Thursday night show, we're closing usually on Sunday. If I have a Saturday show, we're usually closing by Monday or Tuesday. Um, because what well, I want to get the jewelry back, right? Um, but people go, but, but like, what, what, what you sell the Hampton necklace and now you don't have the Hampton necklace to wear so what do you do and I'm like well I just find something else to wear okay so where why would this um, how does this help you be um, creative one because you're constantly supplying making sure that you have orders for these personal shows that you can now have are you with me because now if you're out there finding the customers, you're able to pull those customers together for your own personal show. And by the way, how should you be using your free jewelry? You should be using your free jewelry because let's say your special for March is some piece of jewelry, some bracelet that has some green in it, okay? For the next three people who schedule on my calendar, I'm going to give away this bracelet. It's not green, but just pretend that it is, okay? What do I do on my personal show? I get them for free. I pay the tax on them. I use them as an incentive. And I have not spent $39 in order to provide that incentive or half of $39 in order to provide that incentive. I have leveraged my personal show to be able to provide a really nice incentive that gets shows on my calendar now. Are you with me? Okay, so you, you need to be doing personal shows for many reasons, none the least of which is, it, listen, from a mental standpoint, if you, if you were to look at your calendar and know that you had one personal show every single month on your calendar, you would already be in a better mental state to work your business because you would not be working out of poverty like nothing. You would have something and automatically your brain will be more positive about what you can do with your business. I, it, psychologically, it is the reality, okay? So remember, your jewelry is your store. You have so much creativity that you can, how you use your jewelry. If you want more ideas on leveraging all of these new things that Premier has offered us on Glitzy Gems, one of the most recent videos is called Leveraging Premier's New Options. And it's, um, it's a lengthier um, video because it was more uh, question and answer, um, but that would be a way um, for you to get even more ideas on that, okay? Okay, so I think I will close with this. So we've talked about the, um, 
What was your Roman numeral one? What did I give you? How you think about your business. Okay, that was Roman numeral one, and we talked about several things there. What was Roman numeral two? Creative rebuilding. Oh, I've only given you two things. Wow. Okay. Well, I've given you two things with many things underneath them, right? Okay. So let's go to Roman numeral three so that I can, um, I can wrap this up. Okay, remember, just write Roman numeral three, but don't write a title. Okay. I'm looking at my list of things that... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, here's what we're going to do. For Roman numeral three, I'm going to um, title this Utilize Your Upline. Or maybe, how about this? Utilize all your resources, because your upline is one of many resources. Utilize all your resources. Okay, let's hit the closing the one-on-one. -on -one. I, in our first year premiere, held 60 jewelry shows. They say statistically one in every 10 of your hostesses should sign up to be a jeweler. I ended the year with zero jewelers. That was very frustrating to me, by the way, because I wanted to sponsor. I had a desire to sponsor, but I was not sponsoring because part of my challenge was not just closing the one-on-one, -on -one, but actually getting people to listen to the one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Like in my mind, I was sharing, but in reality, maybe five people heard about the business that year. And there is the problem, okay? Not Premier, Premier wasn't the problem, and I was seeing all these other people sponsoring and promoting, and I'm like, what's the deal? And I want you to know, we, I don't know, we retailed over $24,000 that year, so that meant we made somewhere around $12,000. I considered quitting. You know why? Because I wasn't able to achieve what I wanted to achieve. So I had that thought of, maybe I'll quit, because, you know, it's not, it's not working. Premier isn't working. Okay, but I could see other people were having success. So I knew that I was the problem, not Premier was the problem. So utilizing all of your resources for me looked like making, actually submitting to my upline who said, why don't you let me help you? Okay, so for this get her done, independent, self-sufficient woman, that meant I had to submit to her leadership. So I have a question for you. How well are you submitting to your leadership? Because your leadership is very well attuned to what's happening in Premier, what needs to happen very likely in your business, but to the extent that you will allow them to help you will determine how much value you get from that vast resource that's available in your leadership. Now listen, you might go, but my sponsor doesn't call me much anymore, or my sponsor doesn't contact me a whole lot. And this is what I've learned, and because I've spoken to a lot of groups out here from a lot of areas of the country, and this is something that I have learned in speaking to hundreds and hundreds of jewelers. I have this theory that a lot of leaders stop calling their jewelers because when they were calling or when they were asked for help, they were constantly being either ignored or told that doesn't work. And so what happens is if you are not receptive or responsive to what your upline is trying to do to help you, they are not going to force themselves on you. And so you won't hear from them very much. Why? Because they're letting you do your own thing. And so here's the thing. If you've been doing what you've been doing and getting what you've been getting, are you satisfied with it? Because if you're not, you should be calling your upline and going, I am ready to submit to your leadership. Help me. What can I do differently? And then here's the thing. You need to actually follow through with what they tell you to do. Big on utilizing your resources. Secondly, you need to look at all the resources available for you in terms of the day-to-day -day in your business. If you have older kids, let me tell you, those older kids could be labeling, they could be filing, they could be inputting. You need to be leveraging having your children be a part of your premier business. 
listen, when our boys were five and seven, we taught them how to clear the table, how to begin to rinse the dishes off so they could go in the dishwasher. They would answer the door when we had people over for premier events. They would welcome them. I mean, we, they became part of the, it's a family business. Listen, if you are there stressing yourself out, trying to do everything, you need to get a, a, a checkup from the neck up about either one, I'm too prideful to ask for help, or two, I'm allowing my kids to be lazy. I'm just gonna say it, because they need to learn work ethic as well. And so, and listen, it's different in today's world. Like our boys, if they're not doing their chores, there is no Wi-Fi password. <laughs> that is like your pay. You want to have Wi-Fi, you will do your chores, okay? Whatever it takes, but you need to be leveraging those resources that are available. When we moved, go to the childcare thing, when we moved here, we didn't have people that, like everybody that we were gonna be seeing were like already jewelers, right? So we're scrambling trying to find people um, that we could have for watching our kids. So here's the thing, one of the things, if you remember, a lot of these things that I'm talking about kind of weave in together. If you're connecting socially with other people, you need to connect, really work to develop deeper relationships with people outside of Premier, because see, then I could say to someone outside of Premier, listen, I, I am in need of someone who would be willing to do some childcare swapping for me. So would I, I am willing to watch your children for one day or one evening, and I'm looking for someone who would be willing to reciprocate that by watching my children, okay? That's a way, and listen, that's free. That's free, this, this mutual, remember, that's a strategic partnership. This poor mama right here is looking to get some out of the house mom time, okay? I need to be able to go to training or to be able to do shows. So whatever that is, I'm looking to create some strategic partnerships. That's leveraging the resources that are around you. And listen, that also, here's the next thing I'm gonna tell you about. If you have a need in your business, how much are you praying for God to meet that need? How much are you praying for God to meet that need? And then, so that's my first question. How much are you praying for God to meet that need? And then secondly, how are you praying? Because oftentimes we'll go, I need a babysitter. Okay, how about we change how we pray about that? God, open my eyes to people that I can connect with who would be willing to help me in that way, who would be willing to help me with the care of my children. You need shows on your calendar. God, help me to have eyes to see people who have a need for free jewelry. You want to add people into your Premier family. God, help me to see people who have a financial need so that I can share how Premier can meet that financial need. you got to pray specifically, and you need to pray continually. 1 Thessalonians 5 says, be joyful always. Pray continually, and in all things give thanks, for this is the will of Christ Jesus for your life. Pray continually, like breathing, like you breathe, right? Because if you're not breathing, you know it, and you are fighting for some oxygen. You need to think of prayer as like the oxygen that you need. You need to pray continually. Of course, that is an admonition for people who have that relationship with the Lord. Because if, if, if you would say, I don't have a relationship with the Lord, then the prayer that God is looking to hear from you is one of, I choose to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. And, and, and that's an important, and I, I do want to say that, that I, I love the Lord, I love sharing the Word of God, I love sharing how the Word of God can make a difference in your life, but I also don't want to frustrate you. Because there are promises in the Word of God that are super powerful for the building of your business, but they are meant for people who are in personal relationship with Jesus Christ, not for people who have yet to be willing to enter into relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's an important distinction. So I am not here to frustrate you about that. So please keep that in mind that it's important. If you have questions in your mind about what does that look like? How does that work? Because it's not just enough to say, yes, I know, I know God, I know Jesus, I know he died on a cross. You can have a lot of head knowledge and have not a single bit of heart knowledge relating to him. 
you've got to have the head knowledge, but you, it's got to be connected to a heart knowledge of actually accepting the gift that Jesus Christ provided for you through that death on the cross, that burial, and then that resurrection. And through that, you are able to then tap into all of those promises that the Bible um, provides beyond that God promises to save you from the imperfection that keeps you separated from a holy and perfect God. So I just want to say that where that's concerned. So you've got to leverage your resources. And by the way, that, you know, having, for those of you who have, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm just going to challenge you. How much are you tapping into the resources that God has for you in his word? And to the extent that you are in his word would probably be the first indication of how much you are tapping into the resources that God has for you. Even just little bits of time can make a huge difference by tapping into what the, what the Lord has. So all that to say, just recap, the things you love about Premier are the same things that cause you challenge in Premier. That you've got to consider how you think. You've also got to consider how you can creatively build or rebuild. And then you've also got to utilize all the resources that are around you. And here is what I know, that in our own life, when we moved and we struggled through the depth which included depression. It, it included just the, the mental of just having to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Jesus Christ to see the upswing. I'm telling you, we came here as five diamond. We went to four diamond within the year. We went to three diamond. We went back to four diamond. We went back to three diamond. Last year, we went back to four and then to five you, very quickly. I mean, we have had this in our business. But what I've tried to continue to say to myself is I must continue to stay the course. Let us not grow weary in well-doing, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest. Galatians 6, 9 tells us. In Philippians 3, Paul says, do not keep looking to, you know, we're not going to forget what is behind, but what are we going to do? We are going to press forward to what is ahead towards the upward call of Christ Jesus. That's where we have to continue to keep our focus. And when you do that, what I assure you on the word of God, he will meet you there. He will empower you to do that which you need to do through your business, not only to meet real needs, but also to help meet the needs of other people. And that's where Premier can become so exciting when you really get a hold of honoring God, enriching every life, serving people day by day. That is something that will keep you doing this in a world that would have you focus on all of this. That is what will keep you here 20 plus years like your leadership has. That is what will help you to make a difference, not only in your own life, but in the lives of the people that God brings in your path. I appreciate your time today. You guys have a great end of your retreat.